Hey guys, we are gonna learn about independence in this video. Independence is a common theme and I see it often in release multiple choice exams. And I see it almost in every um, free response question each year. I don't wanna say every, but it's common that you are tested on a free response question if two events are independent. Not every year, but I've seen it often. Okay, what does it mean for two events to be independent? Two events are independent if the occurrence of one event has no effect on the chance that the other event will happen. Some key words when you're asked to prove independence is you might be, um, set, they may say, show two events are independent, prove two events are independent. Are they independent? Or explain why these two events are independent. A lot of you are beautiful writers. I need no writing other than mathematics. You're gonna prove this through mathematics and then a quick sentence at the end. You may have wonderful thoughts on why you think two events might be independent based on your previous experiences, but we were clearly asking you based off of the numbers that are shown to us, are the two events independent? So we're gonna use mathematics to prove this. There are two strategies. I'm gonna teach both of them. I prefer strategy one, um, but they're, they're both important. Strategy one is more useful in my experience um, for a free response question, because what they'll do is they'll set you up for it. And I'll talk about how they kind of set you up to prove independence. Strategy two is also, I shouldn't say that I like strategy one better because I don't want you to think strategy two isn't in, as important. Strategy two is used often in a multiple choice question. And I will give you examples of that as well when we teach live. Okay. Here's what strategy one is. So when you are proving independence, it's like finding two different problems. What you're going to do is you're gonna figure out the probability of B given A based off the data that they give you. That's gonna be your first problem. Then you're gonna figure out based off the data that they give you, what's the probability of B? If the two are equal, then those two events are independent. Another way you could look at it is, again, two problems. Based off the numbers they give you, you could figure out the probability of A and then the probability B separate, and then you would multiply them together. So that would be that part of the problem. Then you would also look at the numbers that they give you and figure out the probability of both of them happening at the same time. If these two numbers are equal, the events are independent. These are both important, both strategies are important. We're gonna practice both strategies right now with a problem about allergies and gender. Just a friendly reminder along the way, always be pausing when you need to. I will have these blank notes posted as well. So if you have a printer at home, you can print them off um, and work with me that way. Okay, is there a relationship between gender and having allergies? To find out, we use the random sampler um, at the United States Census at School website to randomly select 40 US high school students who completed a survey. The two-way table shows the gender of each student and whether the student has allergies. And here's that two-way table. And you can see that we do have the totals. It's always important to make sure you have those because you will need them. Are the events female and allergies independent? Justify your answer. Justify just clearly means show me the mathematics. And then you say, yes, they're independent or no, they're not. Okay, so let's start with strategy number one. We'll do that over here. Just a friendly reminder, this is strategy number one. So I will put it in context right now. I wanna figure out the probability of each female given we have allergies. That must be equal to the probability of being female. I'm gonna move this over a little bit to have a little more room. Again, these are two different problems right now. And we wanna see if they're equal. So what am I gonna do now? I'm gonna figure out the probability of being female given we already have allergies. I like to circle the given. I'm dealing with these numbers, okay? Whatever's to the right of this line is what goes in the denominator. So how many people have allergies? There's a total of 18 of them. In the numerator then is both. How many females also have allergies? That's right here, 10, 10 out of 18. Now, what I want to do then, right, is I do want to figure this out as a decimal, okay? So 10 divided by 18 
equals 0.5 repeating. Now what I want to do, so I figured out my first problem here. Oops, I just want to make this look a little longer so it looks nicer, okay? I want to see if this 0.5 repeating is the same as the probability of being female. Now there is no given, there's no given assumption. So this is out of everyone who was sampled. Out of everyone who was sampled, there was 40 of them. How many of them were female? Well, out of everyone who was sampled with no conditions um, associated with it or co corresponding to it or correlated with it, out of all of the 40 people, 23 of them were female. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 23 divided by 40 and that gives me 0.575. These two Numbers are not equal. So what do I say? Events, female, and allergies are not independent. And that's all we have to do. We show our work right here and we state if they are independent or not independent because they are not equal, they are not independent. That's strategy one. Two questions. See if they're equal, okay? Or two notations to figure out or however you want to think of it. Let's go through and let's do strategy two right now. Okay, so strategy two, let me just remind you. Probability of A times the probability B equals the probability of the intersection. Now, anytime you have a two-way table, the nice thing, I guess, about this is there's no conditions associated with any of them. So it's always gonna be out of your grand total, okay, in your two-way table. What do I mean by that? Let's first write it out. So we're gonna say the probability of being female times the probability of having allergies has to equal the probability of being female and having allergies at the same time. So I'm gonna put that intersection right there. Remember, okay, it's two problems. We're gonna figure both of them out. So again, there's no condition with this. So I don't have to circle any given. We just need to figure out the probability of being female. So we put that right here and we already figured that out. 23 out of 40 of them are female. Then we're gonna figure out the probability of having allergies. Again, there's no conditions here. So it's always out of our grand total, so out of 40. Out of the 40, how many of them have allergies? And there's 18 of them. Now what I'm gonna do is I need to multiply these together. So I'll take my calculator right here. I'm gonna second quit to clear out. I'm gonna take 23 divided by 40 times 18 divided by 40. And that is equal to 0.25875, 0.25875. Now I wanna see, is this equal to, again, there's no conditions with this, out of the 40 people, how many are female and have allergies? And that's right there, there's 10 of them. Well, 10 out of 40, we know that, that's 0.25. Are these equal? No. So we say the events being female and having allergies are not independent. And that's all we do. You guys, I can't stress enough. This is crucial that you show your work and then state yes or no. Please, 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 I repeat, do not go into some grand um, writing. I've had paragraphs written on why two things are independent and they're they're lovely and they have some, uh, some weight to them from an individual thought process like standpoint. But all I care is based off these numbers. Do the numbers tell me that they're independent or not? Okay, that is independence. Our next video is going to be over the multiplication rule. Thanks, guys.